before winter break, we discussed ionic bonds and how to name the ionic compounds we were dealing with. That's called ionic nomenclature. Today, I want to go over with you the covalent molecules and how to name them. So we want to discuss the nomenclature related to covalent uh, bonds. A couple of things we want to keep in mind here is that we will have to look at the prefixes uh, for the elements that are being combined. Uh, if you see a single element, we're going to use the prefix mono. If you see two of those elements in the compound, we're going to call it, we're going to use the prefix di. If you see three of the elements, in a compound, we're going to use the prefix tri. Four is tetra, five is penta. Uh, penta sometimes becomes pent when it's being combined with oxygen. So if you're dealing with a compound that has five oxygens, you won't call it penta oxide, you call it pent oxide. So that's just a slight uh, change. When you uh, look at the elements, um, and I've given you a few examples here, we're going to go through each one of them. Uh, the first element's name, uh, the last part of the name, does not change. If it's carbon, it stays carbon. If it's sulfur, it stays sulfur. Nitrogen stays nitrogen. Silicone stays uh, silicone. Uh, the second element, just like we did for the ionic compounds, the last part of the element becomes ide, I-D-E, I-D-E, I-D-E. So that still stands just like it was for ionic compounds. Now the prefixes are going to come in right here. Uh, sometimes you'll see the prefix show up um, for the first element also if you have two of them. So let's go through some of these for review. Carbon monoxide. One carbon, one oxygen. That's why it's carbon. And uh, there's one carbon and there's one oxygen, so it's carbon, and then we're going to use the prefix for uh, the oxygen monoxide. So mono is the prefix that's used for one single element, and it's usually used for the second element. Uh, you don't, you're not going to say monocarbon monoxide. Uh, for the first element, you can, if it's uh, just one of them, you, you don't have to put down mono. You can just say carbon. Uh, but for the second element, if there's just one uh, element in the compound, then you definitely want to use the prefix mono. Uh, let's take another example, carbon dioxide. There's one carbon, there's two oxygens. Once again, you're not going to use mono for the first element. Um, so we can just gonna call it carbon, and there are two oxygens, so we're going to use the two uh, prefix dioxide. Third example, you have two nitrogens. So when you have two nitrogens, or three, or four, or five, then you want to definitely use the prefix for the first element. Um, the second element, you always use a prefix, whether it's one, two, three, four, or five. So this is two nitrogen, so it's dinitrogen, and there are three oxygen, so it's trioxide. Uh, there's one sulfur here and two chlorine, so it's sulfur dichloride. There's two phosphorus here, there are two phosphor, phosphorus elements in here, and five oxygen. So we're going to call it diphosphorus pentoxide. Um, Remember earlier I said 5 is penta, but when you're dealing with oxygen, uh, you don't say penta, you say pent, and then you add the oxide part. Um, this example has one nitrogen and three bromines, so it's nitrogen tribromide. Remember, if it's a single um, element, the first element is just a single one, you're not going to say mononitrogen. It's fine to just say nitrogen. Um, and then the second element, uh, definitely put the prefix. The first element, only put the prefix if there's two or more, such as the phosphorus example and the dinitrogen and the diphosphorus examples. All right, this one has uh, one carbon and four iodine. So carbon tetraiodide, because tetra is four. Uh, one silicon, two oxygen. So silicon dioxide. Uh, you have uh, a couple others in here. You have two nitrogens and one and three sulfur. So you're going to call it dinitrogen trisulfide. Then you have another example where you have uh, one phosphorus and one uh, nitrogen. So it's phosphorus mononitride, mono uh, one carbon and two sulfur, so carbon disulfide. So here are some examples on how to name uh, covalent molecules. A couple other things you want to keep in mind is if you find a molecule uh, where an element is combined with itself, 
that is called the diatomic molecule and those are your gases so N2 is a nitrogen gas it combines with itself and creates a molecule a covalent one and H2 is the hydrogen gas uh, O2 is oxygen gas F2 is fluorine gas so what I want you to do um, I, on the next page, I'm going to give you some examples, and for this particular assignment, for this video assignment, I want you to go ahead and put down your answers and submit them in the Dropbox. So for practice, here are all the ones that I want you to do. Um, carbon, that's C and Cl4, P and F5, P and F3, O, S, S, E, F3, uh, T, E, B, R2. I'm just reading this out in case my handwriting is not very clear. P2S5, CR3, uh, sorry, C3, N4, F2, CH4, PH3. And I also want you to go ahead and do the reverse, just like we did for the ionic uh, compounds. I'm giving you the name now, and I want you to give me the formula. So over here, I've given you the uh, formula, and I want you to um, give me the name of uh, the compound. Uh, on the bottom, I'm giving you the name. I want you to give me what uh, is it covalent uh, compound formula. So for hydrogen gas, carbon disulfide, nitrogen trichloride, silicone tetrabromide, dinitrogen tetroxide, uh, fluorine gas, uh, oxygen gas, carbon tetrachloride, sulfur dibromide, and selenium tetrafluoride. So you want to go ahead and answer all of these in a Google Doc or on your sheet of paper and upload it to the Dropbox. Uh, please submit it before the due date. Thank you.